Hello, and welcome to Phys 1201. And this first unit in Phys 1201 is going to be about oscillations. As you can tell from some of the images here, forces are back with a vengeance. Energy is also going to come up in this unit. There are some ideas that are a little similar to things we saw in circular motion. And so an awful lot of the ideas that we saw in Phys 1101 are going to come together in this unit, and this will be the basis of the next few units about waves. So here are some examples of repeating processes that we call oscillations. The granddaddy of them all, the one we use to understand all the others, is the mass on the spring. Here's a mass on a spring, and we'll spend a lot of time talking about it, so we'll get back to that. Here's another common example. This is a pendulum swinging back and forth. And if you look back and forth between the pendulum and the mass on the spring, you'll notice some very striking similarities between their motions. Here's another very similar motion. This is a marble rolling back and forth in the bottom of a bowl. Another very familiar example is a vibrating ruler. And one more, one of my favorites, here is coffee sloshing back and forth in a mug. The oscillations that I've just shown you are all motions, but not all oscillations have to do with motion. Here are two examples. This one, this first one is an electrocardiogram, which is a measurement of oscillations of electrical signals in your body associated with your heartbeat. This rather irregular looking oscillation is a plot over several decades of what's called the Southern El Nino Oscillation, which is one of Earth's climate oscillations. And unlike the oscillations we'll be looking at, this one is highly irregular, it's chaotic. If you watch the mass on the spring in slow motion, and especially if you have the video analysis software making a motion diagram over it, you can see that it moves slowly at the ends of its motion and the most quickly in the middle. And I'll just pause it here so you can see that more clearly. Because we know how to interpret motion diagrams and you can see that the points are very close together down here and they were up here as well. So it's moving slowly at the ends of the motion and the dots are far apart in the middle. So this is where it's moving the most quickly. Here is the video analysis of that mass on the spring you were just looking at. This is straight out of the tracker software. And you can see the position versus time. And so this peak here corresponds to the mass being at its highest point. And then you can see that the slope of the position versus time graph is zero there. So the mass is momentarily at rest at that instant. Here's where it's moving the fastest on its way down. Here it is at the bottom with the spring at its maximum extension on its way back up again at its fastest as it passes through the middle and again momentarily at rest at its highest point. And so just note it's going fast in the middle of its oscillation and slow at the ends of the oscillation. Many oscillations behave the way a mass on a spring does, with the highest speed in the middle of the oscillation, but not all of them. Here's an example, and this is a bit of a messy oscillation because I'm using my hands to drive it, but if you look at the motion diagram in between contacts with my hands, this ball is moving at pretty much constant speed in between. Here's the position versus time graph for that ball rolling between my hands. And unsurprisingly, if you remember things from last term, you'll see we have constant velocity in between contacts with my hands. And so we get a position versus time graph that looks like a zigzag. It's a bit of a messy one because of course I wasn't able to make the ball go the same distance between contacts with my hands every time, but this is still an oscillation. In our look at oscillations, we're going to focus on physical oscillations, in other words, on things moving, and on motions which repeat exactly. And because they repeat exactly, we call them periodic, and we can define a period. We're not going to look at oscillations that damp out. Now, most oscillations you encounter actually do damp out, unless they're driven by something. 
but often they damp out slowly enough that you can ignore it and you can approximate them as just going and going and going with the same size oscillation all the time. So if an oscillation is periodic, then you can define a period, the time for a full cycle of the oscillation to occur. And so this is just like the period that we saw in circular motion. It's the time for something to repeat, in this case, a full oscillation. And we'll use capital T to represent the period, just as we did back when we were doing circular motion. And of course, as before, the frequency is one over the period. And Really, if you don't understand why that is, then you don't understand what period and frequency mean. It should be reasonably obvious that the frequency is 1 over the period. So, if it isn't obvious, have a think about the meaning of them. The period is the time for one full oscillation. The frequency is the number of full oscillations per unit time. So here's the sort of oscillation, the sort of position versus time graph you get from a mass on a spring, and we'll become very familiar with graphs like this, but for now I just want to focus on the period. And as you may know, the time from one maximum height until the next maximum height, that's one way that we could define the period. And so you can see in this case that the period is, well, it takes it from 0 to 0.4 seconds, and so the period is 0.4 seconds. But notice that that is exactly the same amount of time as from a lowest point to a lowest point, right? 0.2 to 0.6, that's also 0.4 seconds. Or indeed, from this crossing of the middle to this next, not this one, but this next crossing of the middle. So it's actually from any time, say here, until the next time when the oscillator is doing exactly the same thing. That means it has to be at the same position, but it also has to be going in the same direction. So from here to here isn't a period because this point isn't like this point. It's the same position, but the velocity is in the other direction. And no matter what you look at from one time until the next time when the oscillator is doing exactly the same thing, always turns out to be the same amount of time. That's the period. And I'll just remind you then that if that's the period, that's the amount of time per oscillation, then the number of oscillations per time is what we call frequency, and so that has to be just 1 over the period, right? If this is time per oscillation, then oscillations per time is just the flip of it, right? And so in this case it would be 1 over 0.4 seconds, and that would be uh, 2.5, and that's oscillations per second, which is hertz. And of course, we don't always measure frequencies in oscillations per second, just as we don't always measure periods in seconds. We might measure it in oscillations per year, or per month, or per minute, or whatever. So what we've seen is that there are many, many types of oscillations, and they can have position versus time graphs that look quite different. But we're going to ignore things like the ball bouncing back and forth between my hand, except that for some of these sorts of things, if they're actually periodic, we can define a period and a frequency. But with the methods we're going to learn, we can't get much farther with those. What we're going to spend most of our time looking at is the mass on a spring and things that behave like it. The mass on the spring is the simplest example of something called a simple harmonic oscillation, or sometimes I'll say simple harmonic motion, meaning the same thing. And this is possibly the most common type of oscillation there is. And even if it isn't the most common, 
all other periodic oscillations can be described in terms of simple harmonic oscillations. That's an advanced topic called Fourier analysis that we can't get into in this course, but one of the reasons you should realize that we spend so much time talking about simple harmonic oscillation is that it's the foundation for understanding all oscillations.